Welcome everyone um, to the Agile Professionals Meetup. Uh, get to see some familiar faces. Um, today, uh, th this week, we have uh, Jim York uh, run, gonna run his little workshop here uh, to talk about the Agile Fluency model. Uh, Jim, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a 25 year veteran uh, with Lean and Agile principles and practices. Uh, he's been, he runs a consulting firm right now with his wife, Melissa. Melissa, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Melissa. And, um, uh, well, she runs it. He actually, <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. I, just show, I just show up. He just yeah. shows up where the contract's on. Where, 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 where I'm supposed to be and when I'm supposed to be. Right. So really happy he took the time to come visit us and, and, and share his knowledge with us. And uh, we, yeah. And also thank you to REI Systems for sponsoring and making this form available you know, for the last two years. Uh, if any of you are, you know, if, is anyone looking for opportunities? Open to opportunities, okay, we've got Sheila there, someone else. Is anyone uh, looking to hire or knows looking to hire? Okay, sometimes there are, so we can we put those people together, but, but thank you for coming. And um, uh, ne next month we, do, we, do cur we, I have a couple of choices next month, but we will have another, another meetup next month. Uh, and we have a very exciting year planned. Um, so thank you everyone for coming and I'll hand it over to Jim to get started. Thank you. Um, so I'm Jim York and uh, we're going to take a little exploration this evening uh, into Agile. Um, and we're going to be looking at a particular approach to working with Agile within your organization with your teams. Uh, it's called the Agile Fluency Model. Uh, before we go there, what I'd like you to do is come up to this poster that I've got on the wall and make a mark. I'd like you to place a mark in the quadrant that best describes how you arrived this evening to this session. So I've got four choices for you. One is an explorer. If you're an explorer, you're like a sponge. You're just here to take it all in. You're going to soak it all up and just open all the possibilities. If you uh, came as a shopper, you are looking for absolutely one thing. You're kind of like walking down the street, looking in the shop windows. Thank you. 
Okay, so we have lots of explorers. We've got a couple of shoppers. No vacationers. I guess it is raining. So, no vacationers, um, no prisoners. Okay. What would we do if we had prisoners here? What might we do? Yeah, I'd be curious. You mentioned the, the PDUs, but I'd be curious what brought you here? What brought me here? No, 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 what brought the prisoner here? Yeah, what brought the prisoner? I would be very curious as to what brought the prisoner. What did they do <laughs> that caused them to be you know, sentenced to have to come to a session that they didn't want to be at? Um, and then I'd wonder, you know, why with this open door they're not leaving? So have you ever had prisoners on your teams? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So how does that work out? Not so well. <laughs> not so well, not so well. Um, sometimes prisoners can't leave. Sometimes they can't leave. Um, and my suggestion to a prisoner who can't leave is, well, if you're sentenced to be here, let's make the most of it. Let's just figure out what we can do that, that at the end of this, you can you know, fulfill your sentence and go back with maybe something a little better than your own. Vacationers, um, no vacationers. Uh, all right, so we're here to learn something. Would you be in the prisoner part? Oh, no, absolutely not. No, no, I'm definitely not a prisoner. I'm definitely not a prisoner. Uh, so we're here to learn something. So find the person that you know least in the room and partner with them. Okay, so who would like to share uh, expectations of benefits and outcomes of coming to this session? Who would like to share that? Rodney, you look like you're about to say something. I can. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, uh, Ann and I were just talking about um, the. Wait a minute, you know Ann? No, not really. <laughs> we found out. We found out that we. Uh, we we were concurrently at Pace. Yeah. Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we're just talking about how uh, just being bringing um, people together, uh, thinking about like in our day-to-day -day project work, you kind of get in a rut or get focused in uncertain techniques, practices, you don't necessarily go for air and really think think about different ways of approaching a problem in an agile way or a lean way or whatever. So um, I think that was one of the, the, the areas of kind of a, a focus for us. It's just simply a different way of thinking a about A different this. way of thinking and what, and mm -hmm. we think fluency, there's many ways to interpret fluency, like what intriguingly what you know? What does that mean? When, when you're fluent in something, you're really good, or something works really well. What does that mean? How does it work? So that's right. Kind of right. Area of what just we have. Interesting. Interesting. Um, others, other expectations or outcomes for this evening. Anyone else want to share? Steve. Well, sure, Jim. Uh, I know that you have good things to say, and so I'm interested to hear what you have to say. <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> just, that's just being completely open. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I wish I had it more. So, what kind of outcome? What kind of outcome do you think will result as, you know, we're breathing the same air, what's going to happen two weeks from now? Well, but, but I think by accumulating perspectives on things and hearing other people, mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, the body of knowledge just increases. Okay, so, in, so in increasing the body of knowledge. Different ways of looking at things, increasing the body of knowledge. So what investments have you already made towards that outcome related to this session? What have you done already? investments have you done already? How'd you get here? So for me, it's been meetups that, that talk about varying aspects around Agile. Okay. I'm talking about this, this session in particular. I want to say very precisely focused to this, this evening's session. So, so what investment did you make related to the outcome that you want to do? Expanding the body of knowledge, uh, uh, looking at things perhaps with a new here. perspective? <laughs> How'd you get here? Car. <laughs> came, came in your car. Did, yeah. Is it your car? Yeah. Or did you catch a ride from somebody else? My car. Yeah, so if, it, if it's your car, you probably <coughs> paid for the car, paid for the gas. Yeah. If it was a friend that brought you here and dropped you off, perhaps you you, you paid and, and that they, they did a favor for you, perhaps sometime in the future you will return that favor. Yeah. So maybe you paid a toll to come here. Oh, left work early. <laughs> yeah, left work early. So there's perhaps some other things that you are not doing because you are, are doing this session this evening. Is that an investment? 
Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Do, do we normally think about things this way when we are working with our teams and we're making investments and within our organizations? Yeah, it's an interesting thought. So we're making an investment. What about after? What about after the session? You know, what, what, what will be the follow-on investment? Still, again, connected to this session. What, what will happen next? You apply what you, what you learned. You know, so practice. We'll apply this. Uh, is, is that an investment? Sure. Yeah, again, it's, it's doing this versus that. It's trying things out. Again, do we think about this intentionally with our teams? They were intentionally making an investment. Yeah. I think going to the Jim York store is like not like going to the 7-Eleven or even Trader Joe's. It's like going to Whole Foods and getting that strange vegetable, and I'm going to make it for my teams, and they're just they're going to look at the Jim York vegetable and be like, I don't want that. Be like, try it, try it. <laughs> You'll like it. So I'm going to have to spend some political capital with my team there in order go. to get them to try some or even listen to the idea that I That's have learned. Yeah, it. yeah. A little. Where where did you get the budget for that? <laughs> um, I. I'm a federal employee, so they kind of have to listen to me. I'll figure me <laughs> Sometimes it's because I'm in charge and I can make them. Um, you know, other times it's it's built up through personal influence, and, and we, we build up essentially a bank account of this, and then we sometimes go and we spend some of it. And if it works out, we actually get a good return on the investment. If it doesn't work out so well, you know, it draws down the account a little bit. So. Um, make no mistake, you're, you're making an investment this evening. You're making an investment this evening. Um, so I want to shift gears away from just the, the context of being in this session and the investments and the <coughs> benefits and the outcomes related to this session. Um, I want to get a sense of the, the experience in the room um, related to Agile. And we're Agile professionals, so I'm trusting that we've got a range of experience here. So I'd like to get a sense of that. So, so stand up if you have been practicing Agile for 15 or more years. Stay, stay standing, stay, stay standing. Uh, so so stand, up, stand up, sorry Steve. Stand up if you've been practicing Agile for more than 10 years. There we go, please stay standing. Uh, five years. Three. Two, one. All right, we got everybody. Okay, excellent. You can sit down. All right. Okay. Second, second poll. Um, how familiar are you with tonight's topic? How many of you have used the Agile fluency model? How many of you have uh, read either the 2012 or the 2018 version of the Agile Fluency Model? How many of you are going to invest in reading it after the session? <laughs> okay, uh, so the Agile Fluency Model has been around since 2012 and it has just recently been updated in March, so it's, it's got a brand new version, um, and that's the version that we're going to be talking, talking about this evening. Uh, so given that we have experience in Agile in the room, what I'd like to get a sense of uh, also is why. Why Agile? Why Agile in your organization? The first question that I have is what prompted interest in Agile in your organization? What prompted interest? So find another person, somebody else you don't know in the room, and partner with them and share what it was that prompted interest in your organization around Agile. When you first got involved in it, what, what were people talking about? What was it that, that was the buzz around Agile? What was it about? And capture, capture these ideas, you know, like one idea on a per sticky. First sticky and, and come put them on on the poster. I'm with these. Okay, we're okay. so gonna do a quick a share out. Do a quick share out. What are some things that people had as uh, drivers or prompted? Uh, uh, 
looking off the paper. So, what are some ideas? What are some ideas that people have that prompted the interest? Expediting your process? So, so uh, is that faster, uh, less friction? Yeah. All of the above. Yeah, all of the above. So, expediting our process. What else? What else uh, were the drivers or the prom prompted interest? Yeah. Waterfall sucks. Waterfall sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever we're doing currently is not working. Um, yeah, so waterfall um, might get in the way. So we we'll try something new. Try something new. What else? What else were uh, things that prompted interest? Well, Jim, I had an alt answer because from the beginning, you know, said, I'm interested in Agile. We were always presented with problems that had no straightforward solution. So it was how do you break down the problem? And especially with technology. Uh, I mean, I've been involved in projects where we were literally handed something that was new or didn't even have all the bits in it. Mm -hmm. Right? And so you have to say, well, then how do you implement that? Yeah, you said you had a puzzle uh, without any predetermined solution. And we need an approach that works in that situation. So. Um, that's an uh, approach to Agile without even using the word Agile. It's, it's simply we've got a problem that's got some unknowns and we need to figure it out. And Agile turns out to be quite suitable in that space. Yeah, so, so what prompted interest in Agile can come from a myriad of different places. <coughs> what was the expected outcome? That's the next discussion. Find the next person in the room that you know the least <laughs> and partner with them. What did you try? What did you try? Um, I don't know about you, but I am terrible at remembering people's names. Um, so you might say that I'm not fluent in everyone's name in this circle. Um, in order to get better fluency in understanding everyone's names, how do we accomplish that? We do so through practice. Repetition. Repetition. So this is a very simple game um, whose intent is to help us attain proficiency in each other's names. So I will begin. I will say my name, and I will tell you a little something about myself, and I will do a gesture that represents that thing that I'm telling you about myself. Uh, the next person in the circle will introduce themselves and do the same thing, but only after they have repeated the name, the story, and the gesture of those who went before. Oh dear. <laughs> and we're just going this way. <laughs> what kind of thing should we be sharing? So I will give an example. My name is Jim. I like to make things grow. So introduce me. This is this is Jim. He likes to make things grow. My name is Melissa, and I like to meet new people. So I'm taking your hand. This is Jim. He likes to make things grow. This is Melissa. She likes to meet new people. I'm John, and because this is the most important thing going on, my son is getting married in three weeks. Aww. Aww. So, so here we're getting, it's, it might be getting a little harder so we can help each other out with this. So as we're going through, if everybody does the motions, so it might, might help reinforce as, as we go. So in, introduce everyone that's gone before. All right, um, let me see. This is Jim, and he likes things to grow. Um, she's Melissa. She loves to meet people. John. So help out. So this is John. John. Uh, this is John. And this is John. Oh, his son is getting married in three weeks. Uh, damn, bad memory. Um, my name is Nash, and I love to train people. Um, this is Jim. 
loves her to grow. To grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she is Melissa. She is John. His son is uh, getting married in three weeks. And uh, nice. he is Marsh. And he's married to three people. And I'm glad to study more. What's your name? Yeah. What was it? What's your name? Ali. 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 His son is getting married in three weeks. This is Nash. He loves to train people. And this is Ali. He loves to study. I love sharp. I love agile retrospectives. Rashad? Rashad. Okay, this is Jim. He likes to make things grow. This is Melissa. She likes to meet people. This is John, whose son is getting married in three weeks. This is Nash, who loves to train people. Uh, Ali, who loves to learn. He looks. He looks. And this is Vishal, who loves agile retrospectives. I'm Steve, um, and. <laughs> oh, well, I love to ride motorcycles. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> okay. This is Jim. He likes to make things grow. This is Melissa. She likes to meet people. Uh, this is John. His son is getting married in three weeks. This is Nash. He likes to train people. Um, this is Ali. He likes to learn and read books. This is Vishal. He likes to, he likes agile retrospectives. This is Steve. He likes motorcycles. Wow. And you are. You. And I'm Sheila. And I used to like to dance. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we have Jim. He likes to grow. We have Melissa. She likes to meet people. We have John, his son is getting married in three weeks. We have Nash, he likes to train people. And then we have Ali, who likes to study. And then Vishal, who likes to retrospectives. And then Steve, who likes to ride motorcycles. And Sheila loves to dance. <laughs> And I love Argentine soccer. This is <laughs> Matias. Matias. I love Argentine soccer, and this is the, the chant. All right. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's Jim. He likes to make things grow. This is Melissa. She likes to introduce herself. It's John. He's got a, a son's getting married in three weeks. Nash uh, likes to train people. Ali likes to study. Uh, Rashal, thank God you're here. Uh, Rashal <laughs> likes to do retrospectives. Steve rides his motorcycle. Sheila likes to dance. Uh, Matthias uh, likes Argentine soccer. I have a three-year-old who is growing. <laughs> your name, what's your name? Oh, I'm Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Son, son that's growing? Three-year-old. Uh, she's a daughter. She, she, a daughter she, she, is growing. Daughter's growing. Okay. Right, uh, that's Jim, and he likes things to grow. Uh, that's Melissa, and uh, she likes meeting new people. Mm -hmm. And that's John. His son is getting married in three weeks. That's Nash. Uh, he likes to train people. That's Ali. He likes to read books. And that's Vishal. He likes idle ret retrospectives. And that's Steve. He likes to ride bikes. And that's Sheila, and she likes to dance. <laughs> and that's Matthews. He likes Argentine. What's that? Argentine song. Yeah. And that's Steve. Yes. And he has a three-year-old who is growing. And this is Rohini. I like to learn new things. Oh. Rohini. 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 This is Jen, who likes to make things grow. This is Melissa, who likes to uh, meet new people. This is John, whose son is getting married in three weeks. 
that's Nash, who likes to train teams. This is Avi, who likes to read books. This is Michelle, Michelle who likes agile retrospect. That's Steve, he likes to ride motorcycles. Sheila likes to dance. <laughs> Mathis <laughs> likes Argentine soccer. Jim has a Dave, Dave. So Dave has a young daughter who is growing. This is Rohini. She likes to learn new things. I'm Catherine and I'm athletic. Alright. Jim, he likes to <laughs> he likes to grow or watch things grow or do <laughs> 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 Melissa. <laughs> Um, Melissa likes to meet new people. Yeah. John has a son getting married in three weeks. Nash likes to teach. Uh, Ali likes to read. You, I've heard your name like three different ways. Vishal. 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 There we go. Vishal. Likes retrospective. Steve likes motorcycles. What's that? Oh. Okay. Steve likes motorcycles. Sheila loves to dance. Matthias loves to. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Dave has a daughter that's growing really quickly. Um, <coughs> Rohini um, likes to think. Learn. <laughs> Learn. Use this. Use this. Um, Catherine likes to. Is athletic. Yes. My name is Rodney, and I play the banjo. Oh, okay. Oh, I like that. Okay, it's Jim who likes to make things grow. Melissa who likes to meet new people. John, who has a son who's going to get married in three weeks. Nash, who likes to train teams. Ali, who likes to study. And Vishal, who likes agile retrospectives. Steve, who likes motorcycle riding. Sheila, who likes to dance. Matthias, who likes Argentine soccer. Dave, who has a little girl who's growing. Rohini, who likes to learn. Catherine, who's athletic. Rodney, who plays the banjo. And I am Anne, and uh, I grew up in Thailand. Oh. <coughs> Alright, so Jim likes to grow something. And Marisa <laughs> likes to um, shake him, meet people. And John, uh, son, getting married in three weeks. And Nash likes to teach. And I like to learn and read. And read by the Richard Spockman. And Steve like to ride a horse, like, oh. <laughs> and <laughs> John like to dance. All right. Uh, Matthias like to play hey, Argentina soccer. And uh, Dave had a daughter grow, three years old. All right. And Rohini, <laughs> Rohini like to uh, learn. Catherine. Other, right? And uh, Ronnie likes banjo, all right? And Anne likes um, Thailand. And Saya like a Taiji. Saya. Saya. Okay. Jim likes things to grow. Uh, Michelle or <laughs> Melissa <laughs> likes to meet you. Oh, yeah. John has a son getting married in three weeks. Roshan, no, Nash. Nash, Nash. 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 Um, <clears throat> likes to learn. Likes to train. Train, teach, train, train, train. Yeah, well, the train, train, teach. Okay. Train. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to be on stage. <laughs> um, Can Ali? you say this is the best game uh, of Whisper Down the Lane ever? <laughs> 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 Ali? 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 Steve likes to ride motorcycles. Ali? 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 So, we have a little girl. Dave likes a little girl. Uh, has a little girl that's growing. Uh, Rohin likes to learn. Uh, and <coughs> likes <coughs> Catherine, Catherine likes to work out. Uh, and Roger. 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 <laughs> and uh, Banjo. And grew up in Thailand. Thailand. Saya. 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 
What's that called? Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Tai Chi. I'm David, and I like to take care of my grandson. Aww. Nice. Okay. <coughs> All right. <laughs> you can do it. Stay loose. <laughs> All right, um, so Jim likes to help people grow, or grow things. Melissa likes to meet new people. Uh, John's son is getting three, in three weeks, son's getting married. Uh, Nash likes to train people. Uh, Ali likes to study. Uh, don't say it, don't say it. Darn it, it's like, because I, I know it's a V or an R, because I you said it was a V, but V, 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 Alright, sorry. So we shall like so retrospectives. retrospectives. Uh, Steve likes to motorcycle ride. Sheila likes to dance. Mateus likes to soccer. David likes his daughter. She's growing. Rohini likes to learn things. Uh, Catherine likes she's athletic. Rodney plays his banjo. Anne's from Thailand. Syed likes Tai Chi. Uh, David likes hanging out with his grandson. And I'm Christy, and I like to paint. Awesome. Jim has to do this one. Can I start with Jim? See, she actually, this is a little unfair. She didn't get to, she didn't participate through the whole thing, so. Okay, Jim likes to make things grow. Melissa likes to meet people. John, so I'm getting married in three weeks. Ollie likes, yeah. Nash. likes to train people. Fish Agile Steve likes motorcycle. Yeah. Sheila likes to dance. Matias likes Argentine soccer. Dave has a three-year-old who's growing. I couldn't see this part of the room, so it's going to be. <laughs> likes to learn. Yeah. Catherine yeah. is athletic. Rodney banjo. And Thailand. Likes Tai Chi, Dave <laughs> likes to hang out with his grandson, and I miss yours, Christine. Christine likes to paint. This was an exercise in fluency. It takes practice. It's hard work, isn't it? Now, part of what helped this was we got to see it over and over again. We got to practice it over and over again. We got help from our friends when we stumbled. Um, we had clarification in pronunciation when we struggled with knowing whether it was a V or an R um, or, or whether it was a Christie or a Kathleen or dif different things. We constantly had reinforcement. <coughs> this is how we become fluent. Have you ever been to a, a, a country or a location where people spoke a language that was unfamiliar? Yeah. It takes a while to figure out what's going on there and how can I participate, how can I join in. Um, it takes a significant amount of time to, to eliminate that, that little translation that's going in your brain to the point where it becomes natural. It's, it's your default behavior. It's like if you're falling off a cliff and you scream out, help, you know, what, what word are you going to use to express that? Is it, is it going to be in, in the language of the locals or is it going to be in a different language? When we are getting in, in an agile environment with our teams, one of the big questions is what, what is the language that we're speaking there? What is our default behavior? And this is what the agile fluency model is helping us get some insights on. So let's go back over here and talk about it in the remaining few minutes of, the, of this uh, session. Catherine connected the information of Dave's growing kid with your likes to grow the things. The connection was grow, so she connected grow with likes to grow, but then we connected with kids. So 
that's how you bring connected yeah, information with two little, different little names. tricks and mnemonics are going on that we use to practice, but after a while it becomes natural. And and uh, <coughs> you know, I know several people in the room, and their names just come naturally to me. There are others, I, quite frankly, I struggle with. I'm not fluent with with the others' names yet. Sorry. You know what? I invite your wife to come because I can't stop doing that. I want to do it again, again. <laughs> 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 okay, so, so we, came, we came for the Agile Fluency model. Uh, so let's talk about uh, This model, again, I shared earlier, was first introduced in 2012. Uh, it was published in Mark Fowler's website uh, by James Shore and Diane Larson. So this, this is the model here. This is a simplified version of the model. You can read all about it on Martin Fowler's site. Um, you can also find more information about it at the um, um, agilefluency.org website. Um, tonight I just wanted to kind of get us a little flavor of, of what it, this model is, is about. And I want to get into a lot of the details. There's a whole lot there. And there are workshops related to this model that are days in length. And, and this is one of those things where you can look at it and um, kind of understand what the model is in, in minutes, but to actually apply it and be effective in using it, um, it's one of those lifetime and master things. So uh, the model is looking at shifting from uh, a pre-agile state to a fluency in agile. And the first observation that you might have about this model is it looks a little bit like a maturity model. You know, as you progress through these different uh, areas, it looks like you're getting to a, a higher and higher level of proficiency. And, and you are getting to a higher level of proficiency in a certain way, but it's, it's more like this. And this is the metaphor that Diana and, and Jim Shore used to explain this. It's kind of like bus zones. <coughs> you know, when you're, when you're in a city and you, you look at the bus map, and you want to go from one place to another, you, you typically see different zones. And depending upon what it is that you're trying to accomplish, um, you will go to a different place on that map. And it isn't necessarily true that one zone is more valuable than another. You know, for example, if you want to go uh, you know, to the big box store, you, you get on the bus and you go to the suburbs, because that's where the big box stores are. <laughs> You know, you don't find the big box stores downtown. Uh, so it's not that going to, you know, that zone is any inherently better than going to, uh, you know, this downtown zone where perhaps you might be going to the theater. Uh, it's not that it's inherently better to be in one zone versus another. You're just trying to do something different. And the, the investment that you might make in going to these different zones might be different. And it's not reflective necessarily of whether the zone is better or, or worse for the investment. It's just what you're trying to, what you're trying to accomplish and what you have to pay to get there. Uh, so as you come through this model, you might find that, that some teams um, are, well, first let me talk about fluency. Agile fluency is, is at the team level. Not at an organization. Organizations aren't fluent. Organizations make the investment. They buy the bus ticket. <laughs> So the organization isn't, isn't uh, you know, agile, it's the teams that are agile. Teams are the fundamental building blocks in, in, in agile. So we are, we are having the team take the ride on the bus, but the organization's buying their ticket. So the organization can enable teams, organizations can also constrain teams. So we're looking at the different, different places. There are some teams uh, that all they're interested in doing is, is coming together and feeling like they're on the same team, working on the same thing. And if you're going to this zone, perhaps most illustrative is what's not there. What's not there? When you go to a focusing team, you are not going to find sustainability in delivery. And that may be perfectly fine. There may be an organization that you're in which basically you build stuff and then you move on. 
and you build something else and you move on. You build something else and you move on. You're not, you're not maintaining a system over a long period of time. It's like, it's like building disposable systems. So all you're doing at that level is you're focusing on the same thing and, and having the team feel like they are a team working the same thing. Delivering um, has those sustainability practices. This is more about technical excellence. Um, the other thing that's not here with the focusing team is we don't necessarily have a customer full-time or customer subject matter expertise, business decisioning full-time present within the team. This team is being told what to do and they go out and do it. You might have good business direction, but it's not part of the team. It's outside of the team. So the shift from pre-agile to getting a focusing team is building a team culture. So Anne, I think you mentioned earlier, building an SDLC or working on building a process, a work right. process. So part of the investment here for this focusing team is an investment in creating that team's work process. Because that work process is going to be different when we're together versus what might have existed when we, were no, when we weren't together and we were focusing on different things. When we shift to a delivering team, now we're going to focus on developing team skills. So this is technical excellence. This is proficiency in uh, sustainability, um, delivering at will. So the first, first uh, focusing team, we might check in once a month just to see how the team's doing. What have you built so far? Doesn't necessarily mean they can deliver. They're just, they're just building something. Delivering teams are able to deliver at will. When we shift to optimizing, this is the change in organizational structure. Christine, I think, did you, did you say earlier a change in organizational design? Or was that Pam? Yeah. Yeah. You know, a, an investment in changing the organizational structure here. So this might be um, putting, uh, testing your QA members permanently on the team. This would definitely be uh, having business decisioning within the team. They are now making the investment decisions. They are making the business decisions on, on what is done. That's contained within the team as opposed to being directed from outside of the team. So we're shifting here. We're starting to make changes in the organizational design. Uh, when we move to strengthening we are now moving to where that team sees where it is in the context of the larger organization. How all the pieces and parts of the overall organization serve a greater, a greater cause or a greater mission. Uh, this area of strengthening is kind of the, it's the future of Agile. We really don't know where this is going. But the fascinating thing is you can have certain practices that are present in this space. Uh, that don't necessarily mean that you're fully proficient here, you're simply doing some of these things. So some of the things to give you a, a sense of what might be in that space, um, an open space structure, where, where people from the whole organization are coming together and talking about organizational concerns and ways to make progress, ways to, ways to improve things going forward for the overall organization. Um, other things that are happening in this space is having a self-organization turned up to 11 on the dial that only goes to 10. So this is having teams, uh, self, people self-selected in teams. So I've seen both of that happen um, for the last couple of decades. So this, these are not new things that are happening, but we are not talking about being proficient in all of the different uh, capabilities here. So in each of these zones, there are some core benefits. There are key proficiencies. And investments that need to be made to be in these places. And there are some core metrics. That, that you'll find. And there's a simple little one page I'm going to hand out here for the model. It gives a little bit more detail about this. So 
So one thing I want to draw your attention to is, is the time investment. Um, I, think, I think John had to leave, but John was talking about in his group, uh, I would love to have a further conversation with him about this, he thought that the investment times were sometimes shorter because of the environment that he was in. And the model actually accounts for that. If you take a look um, in each of these areas, um, over on the uh, right-hand side, next to focusing on the chart, you'll see that there's a investment of time. It's two, two to six months to take an organization typically from a pre-agile state to getting them focusing. So this is for, this is for a team, two, two to six months. <coughs> when we want to shift beyond focusing into a delivering team, again, this is technical practices. This is like, um, introducing some of the technical practices from an extreme program through all of these, but just to give you a flavor of this, I wanted to, to go to the focusing one. So for focusing, what's the first investment that you think you'd make for a focusing team? Training. Yeah, full time. De dedicate people to the team full time. And train. And, and train them. You know, but dedicate people to the team full time. Is, is that what we normally see? No. In organizations? So we started this evening talking about things that were prompting the interest in Agile, the things that you tried, and the investments that were made. Um, the question I asked was, can you expect the outcome without making the investment? No. No. Yeah, and this agile fluency model is intentionally simple. It's an incredibly simple model. Models are a simplified version of a process or a system. We intentionally simplify it to draw our attention to things that are important. And it's not to say that the model is right. Models are a simplified version of a system or a process. So that simplification, by necessity, takes away potentially some important things. So this is not to say that the model is right, but it does drive some interesting conversations. If we want to be successful in achieving our outcome, are we making the core basic investments that we need to make in our teams? So for focusing, number one, Dedicate people to the team full time. I think all too, all too often you have companies that want to get there, but it's like if you were, let's say you wanted everybody to stop drinking coffee and mm -hmm. you wanted to drink tea. As long as you're continuing to serve coffee as a menu item, <laughs> it's not going to happen yes. because people like the coffee and that's what they want to drink. Yep. And so you kind of just have to take away all the coffee and say, we're drinking tea now, guys. Go for it. Lots of different kinds. Yeah. You know? So one of the things to keep clear here is the model is about developing proficiencies within a team. Right, but it's the same kind of thing, which yeah. is, you know, uh, I was on an assignment at early last year at a company, financial services industry, mm -hmm. and they're saying they want to commit to Agile. They're saying Agile as the first um, thing, but they have, they want to keep delivering and they have teams that don't know Agile. Mm -hmm. They're training on the side, they're bringing in coaching, mm -hmm. they have a set of rules, okay, we want you to follow this, but um, they won't dedicate the teams, it doesn't happen mm -hmm. because they're too busy trying to deliver other things. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's kind of funny that you, you, you mentioned that because when Jim brought up the metaphor of you're in a foreign country, I thought about the time that I lived in Italy, and almost all the Italians would assume that you were American. You could walk up, and we'd have, uh, uh, I was a soldier at the time, I was in the US Army, and we'd have people who English was their second language, right? I, I had a, a buddy who, was, uh, um, who spoke Spanish as his first language. He'd walk up, and they'd start speaking English to him, and as a joke, he'd start speaking back Spanish, right? Uh, but the point is that as long as people were speaking English, you the soldiers were not learning Italian, exactly. and right. they weren't even learning the Italian culture because the Italian culture comes through in the language. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, and that, I think that's absolutely critical. And 
this is the job of the organization is to make the investment in this space so that you are immersed. Mm -hmm. You're immersed into the experience. The, I think the hybrid, I understand why they do it, but it is uh, setting yourself up for failure mm -hmm. because you'll never get away from it. You just kind of have to right. do it. Right. You got to jump in, get wet, and do it. Mm -hmm. right. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Or it's going to happen very late in the game, and you're, you know, you're missing out on a lot. And that, it's well, not you, it, it'll, it'll delay it, or and potentially forever. Yeah. Yeah. And certain, certainly will slow it down. Let's see. Yeah, but you're in that a bit of a misuse of the terms. If you say invest, the presumption in an investment is that there's some rate of return. That's the big question: is what is the expected rate of return? What What are you trying to accomplish? That informs which zone you want to go to. Mm -hmm. Yes, but would you in, would you invest in something? If If I said, well, Jim, here's an investment uh, where you have to make a real investment, and you said, well, what's what what's do I get? Return? Yeah. Well, what do I get out of this? And I said, well, we don't know. So, so the, the model is built with some expected kind of core metrics around this. Mm -hmm. So on a focusing team is what is the benefit? What is the core thing you're going to see? You're going to see what the team is working on at least once a month. That's the core benefit that you get. Are you willing to make the investment? And the investment is, again, things like dedicated team members, uh, creating a shared uh, space for the team, uh, creating a focus for the team by having business representation that's telling the team what it is that they want the team to be built. Yeah, but Jim, what I, what I hear, and I've heard this a lot, it's like, okay, so to co-locate people mm -hmm. and to have a dedicated team, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you're incurring real personnel occupancy expenses. Absolutely. Right? So you have to, you have to what wait. What Well, you get to see something. Is that so, worthwhile? So it can translate into... No, no what, what I'm saying is, is you have to have, you have to have a to call an investment get to a presumed valuation of of that. Well, that's the return. You, you can't take, about the return. No, you can't. No, no, no you can't. No. You can't take a tangible and then compare it to something intangible. Well, but you can't. They call it an investment. Okay, well, give me another example. I think example. you can. So, for example, when, example. when you're when you're putting up when you're putting together a project, whether or not you're doing agile, you still have to figure out what your what your business case is for spending yes. the monies and what they're going to be and what you're budgeting, right? Yep. And so um, part of that is if I want to deliver, let's say uh, I'm the VP of products and I say, you know, gee, our customers are really going for this new thing and we got to get it out there in three months because you know what, all of our competitors are there. So we're going to lose market share if we don't get it out there. So that becomes a dollar value. You know, we expect to retain <coughs> and increase by so No, with all due respect, it does not become a dollar value unless you can monetize it, right? Yes, but you can monetize it. You can look at your market share. You can look at your, you know, what you're selling to your current customer. If you're looking at what you're share, selling to your current customers, right, you can either increase that, you can increase right. the margins yeah. on what you're selling. Right. But, but not getting to market is an opportunity cost. It's not, you, you won't find it in a, Perspectives, because you can't put those in there. Well, but some of them is what's going to happen. You know, my market share could go down. We're not going to be competitive, so the market share is going to go to someone else who is producing that, and they, you know, that gap is being filled by someone else. So you can quantify it. I mean, literally. So, I've yeah, and, and by the way, I, by the way, I don't mean to be launching some sort no, of no, attack. No, no, no. But, I, mean, but I was just going to say, as a practitioner. I think this is something we need to hit head on, oh, which yeah. is what you're saying there is you're effectively going to run at a loss in that first loop. Oh, you are. You are. Oh, so, yeah. so, so, okay, so that's all I was saying. Is this yeah, so, so, about so the investments are pretty clear, and, and they can be calculated right, pretty no easily. What does it cost to have a dedicated team space? You, you can calculate the cost of that real right. estate. What does it cost to dedicate team members? The question for the buyer, the investor, because it's the organization that's buying the ticket to go to that zone, is is making that investment, are you going to get a return that's meaningful for you? Do you value being able to see what your teams are working on? And if the answer to that question is no, I don't value that, then you wouldn't buy the ticket as, as the organization for your team to take that journey. Here for de you know, delivery, deliver at will. What, what is the value of being able to have your team deliver just at will? So, so, you're, talking well, about, well, I think so you're talking about investments like uh, 
if I were to buy a building. And it's gonna, the, the expense is going to, in an accounting fashion, it's gonna be taken out over a period of time, right? It's gonna yes. be accounted for in that regard. So yes, there will always be some infrastructure kind of investments that are made that you can't necessarily tie back to a specific project. But at the end of the day, if you're, you know, if you're investing in horse and buggy car you know, carriages, and you don't get the Model T that's coming along, uh, you're going to suffer down the road. You know, it, it will have an impact on what you're doing. If you're, if you don't stay current with the marketplace and with your competitors, you are going to lose market share. You're going to lose, and you may not be around. So, so yeah, these, these are to. these are questions that would be you'd be asking at the higher levels in the organization. Yes. Is yes. strategically, what are what are our right. our risks? What are our strategies? What are our opportunities? Exactly. And all that. And that may translate into, I want, I, as an organization, we're willing to buy a ticket to go somewhere right. if we're going to apply some of these agile techniques. Um, that's a different kind of modeling. It's a different kind right. of, of kind of setting up the goals. The, the fluency model is looking at what is your team able to do? And is your team being able to focus, or is your team being able to deliver, or is your team being able to optimize, essentially define, define their market? Are those things that are important to the organizational strategy? And, and if so, the organization might want to make an investment in the team right. developing those kinds of proficiencies. And that's really what the model is about, is trying to connect organizational strategy to, to practice. What proficiencies do we want to have our teams do? Um, so the key thing to keep in mind, though, is it is a model. Right. It, it's not about necessarily even talking about the model with your organization, it's it's about using the model to inform what kinds of investments are necessary to clarify what might be going wrong if you're trying to accomplish proficiency in, for example, the delivering zone. The model helps provide clarity around why it is that you might be struggling in that space. And also, it helps align conversations. So when we're talking about a team, what are we trying to accomplish? Um, sometimes we have teams that think that what we're doing is we're focusing, but you have individual team members that are thinking what we're trying to do is optimize. And that disconnect can often you know, cause some confusion when you're on the bus going to that zone. Um, what is it that we need to do in practice? So that's a very quick introduction to the model. I would, I would encourage you to go to the agilefluency.org website, read some more about it, and again, the original article was published on the uh, on Martin Fowler's website. There's a link to that from the from the agilefluency.org website. So, I've used this and other similar models in my coaching work over the last 20 years, and I found them to be very effective in, in getting a, a clarity around what it is that we're trying to solve, and I think it kind of comes back to what Steve shared earlier, is what is, what is the problem we're trying to solve? Um, it's not we're here to implement Agile, it's we're here to accomplish a specific objective. Agile proficiency may allow you to work um, in that space more easily, because you're proficient in what's necessary to be Agile in that, in that zone. So uh, we have a few minutes for Q and A. Mm -hmm. Or did we already Q and A? So we have new team members come come on board. Mm -hmm. Does it kind of reset the whole model? Mm -hmm. uh, that's an interesting observation because as a team we all get there together, and part of this is what we saw in the name game. If we are in the game together, you're immersing that new person into our environment where we are developing proficiencies and <coughs> proficiencies kind of they don't they don't pro always progress upward sometimes we regress and regression can happen because we have instability in the team or our team space gets taken away or this that or the other thing happens lots of things happen a new team member coming in will very likely lower the proficiency of the team but for a short period of time, if we give them the right support. Um, just again, as we did in the name game, when somebody couldn't remember somebody's name, the rest of the, the rest of our group stepped in and 
gave them some hints, gave them some reinforcement, and through that reinforcement, we tend to learn very quickly. So yeah, absolutely. Every time we make a shift, there's going to be a there's going to be some adjustment to absorb that. But we we all get there together. That's one. It's an interesting observation with the with your coaches, within your teams, with your fellow teammates. Is that when when somebody new comes on board, they need be, they need to be incorporated as part of the team. You know, how do we welcome? Them? How how do we how do we do things? And and there are different techniques, pairing and other things, swarming. That, that can help with that. So, other other questions? Is there sometimes where you may be in a further zone, but realize you may need to get back to focusing? Yeah, I think so. I think I, I do see that quite often myself. Is that <coughs> when we are we're, we're building on proficiencies, but when we're in certain zones, sometimes we forget how to to do some of the things at the more basic levels. So it, it's almost like uh, you know when you are uh, you know, doing a, an activity, sometimes you go back to the basics. Like if you're watching a professional football game, you know before the game starts, you see the players go out on the field and run through some basic drills, and they're going back to the basics. When they get into the game, they're going to be doing some very sophisticated things together as team members, but they always go back and practice the basic things. Um, when things are falling apart at one of the higher levels, it may be that we've drifted away from some of the more basic proficiencies. And again, if you bring a new team member on, you know, the, the team might have to go back and, and then come forward again with that. But the good thing about that is the more practice that you have, the better you get at it. Yeah, I think this builds a certain resilience into the team. When we all begin speaking the same language and it's our natural behaviors, other people see that and they begin, begin to adopt the same kinds of behaviors. You know, it's when we have the disconnects and the point that Ann brought up earlier about, you know, this team's agile, but this team over here is doing something different. It, it creates some confusion in the organization. So those can be, um, those can be confusing to the team members as well. Other questions or comments? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.